There we go. Hey, y'all. Welcome back. This is going to be the start of Unit 2. Uh, so we're going to be talking about religious freedoms in Unit 2. Uh, so Unit 2A will concern the Establishment Clause. And it will cover, I believe, four cases. Yeah, four cases. All right, so let's jump in. Uh, the first case is going to be Everson v. Board of Education in 1947. And the vote is five to four, affirming the lower court decision. And Justice Black delivers the majority opinion. So, basically the context is that a New Jersey law allows school districts to make rules. And a New Jersey township allowed for a law that reimburses parents for the expenses of busing, including to Catholic and parochial schools. So someone sued the school board for having given money to the Catholic Church in a basically a separation of state and church argument. So there are two legal arguments here first. The first is that the law allows the state to take taxes from all and bestow it upon a few non-public goods in violation of the 14th Amendment. So this is what the people who sued the New Jersey School Board are saying, that you're taking taxes from many and providing it to the few for parochial reasons. And then second, the taxes are being used to support Catholic schools, which teach Catholic faith and practices being run by a Catholic priest, and they're arguing that this is in violation of the First Amendment separation of church and state. But the Supreme Court rules otherwise. They say, first, the state does actually have a right to use taxpayer dollars for busing, um, even to private schools, because it satisfies a public need for, set, for education. The overriding public need for education is more important um, than the sort of complaints about taxes from the citizens. And then they also offer some historical context about legal argument number two, right, the establishment of religion. Um, and they basically said that historically in Europe and in the United States as early founding, churches were often tied with a specific government and basically forced taxation or tithes or assimilation. And this is why many Americans actually immigrated to the U.S. originally. And so... While this started to occur early on in historical America, especially in places like Maryland and Virginia, um, the First Amendment was added to the Constitution to guarantee that this practice would not continue. So, and then the 14th Amendment further pushed this to the state level, not just the federal government. And then they have a really long quote here, and I usually don't do huge quotes, but this one seemed very important. So, the quote is, the, the establishment of religion clause of the First Amendment means at least this. Neither a state nor the federal government may set up a church. Neither can pass laws which aid one religion, aid all religions, or prefer one religion over another. Neither can force nor influence a person to go to or to remain away from church against his will or force him to profess a belief or disbelief in any religion. No person can be punished for entertaining or professing religious beliefs or disbeliefs for church attendance or non-attendance. No tax in any amount, large or small, can be levied to support any religious activities or institutions, whatever they may be called, or whatever form they may adopt to teach or practice religion. Neither a state nor the federal government can, openly or secretly, participate in the affairs of any religious organization or group, and vice versa. So, given that, they state that this was a really tricky case, right? Because one, we must not only consider the First Amendment separation of church and state arguments, but also the argument that New Jersey cannot sort of discriminate against the Catholic Church in its broad-based tax collection and distribution of public services, right? So, because New Jersey is providing some broad-based public good through the benefit of education and busing, and because it cannot discriminate against a religious organization and members while doling out public goods, and because New Jersey is not creating any sort of religious establishment, their tax and spend scheme is declared to be constitutional. 
Okay, so case two, Zorak v. Clausen, 1952. The decision is a six to three affirmation of the lower court ruling and Justice Douglas delivers the majority opinion. And basically, New York City has this program where some kids can ask to be dismissed with the um, sort of signature of their parents to, to attend a religious service or instruction um, away from the school. So New York City uh, doesn't pay for any of this program. You have to have your parents' permission. Um, the religious organizations cannot use any school grounds or money to, to profess their religion. Um, and then also the priests or imam or rabbi or whatever it is has to take attendance and tell the school if students are missing. And basically, the Supreme Court just said, all right, this is clearly legal, right? Um, the school is in no way paying for anything. It's not establishing a religion. Um, and so it's, it's basically legal. Okay, so case three, Engel v. Vital, 1962. Uh, so the decision is a six to one reversal of the lower court ruling, and Justice Black delivers the majority of opinion. And in the case here, the context is that the school board of a New York school district was ordered um, to order the principal to, in turn, order the teachers that students have to recite a prayer each morning. And the prayer is, quote, Almighty God, we acknowledge our dependence upon thee, and we bless thy and we beg thy blessings upon us, our parents, our teachers, and our country. Okay, so the court rules that this is a clear violation of the Establishment Clause of the First Amendment. Uh, the state argues that the prayer is non-denominational and that those who don't wish to recite the prayer may be silent or may be excused. The court says, bullshit, it's denied. You can't do that. Okay. Case 4, Epperson v. Arkansas, 1966. It is a unanimous 9-0 decision to reverse the lower court ruling, and Justice Fortas delivers the opinion. So Arkansas passes a law stating that teachers can't teach evolution in schools or in universities. Um, it was a law from 1928, and it's based on the Scopes Monkey Trial Law in Tennessee, uh, which said that Tennessee could ban the teaching of evolution, which the courts actually upheld. And so the Supreme Court took this on and said, look, this has been going on for far too long. The uh, Scopes Monkey Trial decision was incorrect. Uh, we know it's been 40 years, but we're going to overturn that. And so the court decides to strike down the Arkansas and the Tennessee laws using the Establishment Clause. And they basically claim that the state is supporting Christian ideology over, say, secularism or science or atheism, and they cannot um, make a choice about sort of um, supporting one religion over another. So they struck it down. All right, I'll see you for the next one. This was Section 2A on the Establishment Clause. Y'all have a great day.